Hey everyone, welcome to today's session on engagement strategies for unique campuses. Today we'll be hearing from Logan Muzika from Trinity University and Tigerthon. Make a note about any questions you might have as we go. Um, we will di direct you to the Discord channel at the end of the presentation. Um, but with that, I will pass it off to Logan to get us started. Awesome, thank you. So. Hi, my name is Logan Muzika, and I attend Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. Um, it's a small school. You probably have not heard about it. We're a campus primarily of undergraduates and have a population of around 2,500 students. Our mascot is Leroy the Tiger, so our program is called Tigerthon. We started our program three years ago and are entering our fourth year, and I'm entering my second year as ex executive director. So I've compiled advice that has drastically improved Tigerthon and can definitely help other schools like mine, whether they're small institutions, burgeoning programs, academically competitive schools, or other liberal arts universities. Dance marathons can be just as impactful for us small schools. Uh, we just have to strategize. So here are my five tips to help engage your unique campus. So tip number one is appeal to each organization differently. So Tigerthon has learned to cater our recruitment to organizations in a specific manner, which has drastically improved our ability to get teams to register. So our first two years, we maintained a consistent number of about 18 teams, uh, which were mostly Greek organizations and some religious organizations on our campus. Uh, but this year we really tried to strategize how we recruit and we actually grew our recruitment to 28 teams from 18. So in general, the best way to recruit is to go to an organization in person and talk to them about it. And the best way to do this is if you have someone on your internal team involved in the organization already or knows a friend who is, personal con connections will save you time and are much more effective. So here are a few examples of how we've tailored our recruitment to organizations. So Trinity has this group called TUVAC, which is Trinity University Volunteer, Volunteer Action Committee, which basically we went to them and we just emphasized the service component of Tigerthon. You know, leaving out all the other details, we just focused in on how, you know, they can help us table, how they can spend time canning at places, um, how it basically connects to their specific goals as an organization. Uh, so we already had some people in Greek life uh, registered as teams in years past, but if you specifically appeal uh, to other Greek organizations talking about hanging out with the kids or the competition hour where they get to compete against other uh, sororities or fraternities, that was a way that we got a lot more to register this year. With athletics, we just decided to make a sport hour at our event um, and include some mini events, which I'll talk about later, that revolved around sports. Um, for pre-med organizations, we just talk about working at a hospital, interacting with patients, how that's, you know, very pre-medical experience with Tigerthon. And we even got a Dungeons and Dragons group because we decided to give them a corner at our main event um, so that they could do their things, you know, teach kids how to do it too. Just basically appealing, making Tigerthon fit to what they are interested in. And that really helped us uh, get a lot of people recruited. So my second tip is to concentrate your commitment. So make sure that your dance marathon is one of the top three activities for each of your executive members. So no matter how impressive someone's resume and application are for dance marathon, gauge whether or not they'll actually have the time to do what they're claiming that they're able to do. So in all honesty, this has been Tigerthon's greatest struggle. We have a lot of overachievers and resume boosters on our campus, which isn't a bad thing, but maybe those people need to just register as participants. For a leadership team to function coherently, you need commitment just about over any other skill set. You can train someone to do finance or how to communicate professionally or even push people to the edge of their comfort zones in recruitment, but you can't make someone be more committed. That's something that they have to have when they walk through the door. So we went from an executive team of 12 uh, in 2019 and in 2020, we actually cut down to eight in our executive team, uh, but our internal fundraising actually grew from $8,500 to $9,800. So even with losing the number of people, uh, we were more productive and efficient as like a team with concentrated commitment. Um, that's really helped us out a lot. And from my experience, um, 
the best way to help make sure your internal team is as committed as possible is also implementing safety nets where you need them. So we decided in to add in assistance for our director positions and our finance positions, uh, two of which can be the most difficult to fill if someone is slacking or in the unfortunate circumstance where someone leaves the organization. Um, that way you just have solid, already trained people to take over and no one has to um, pick up too much slack or has too much added stress or responsibilities. So this actually unfortunately happened this year. Our finance chair quit seemingly out of nowhere. In the end, I'm glad we had an assistant director because we ended up splitting, splitting all the finance tasks between us. And this upcoming year, we now have two assistant directors. So if anything like this happens again, we have double the potential to handle it better and no one is left uh, juggling tasks alone. So my third tip is not to neglect individuals. So this is where small schools specifically can thrive. So we have the resources for more individualized treatment, so we use it to our advantage. So in general, we're able to acknowledge and reward improvements in fundraising on an individual basis better. So some of our specific ideas were uh, when people registered, we offered to make custom door signs and hand deliver them to their room and put them up for them. Um, you know, that basically have the Miracle Network balloon and say their name and that they registered. Um, another fundraiser that we did was for Valentine's Day, we hand delivered flowers and notes to people's doorsteps. Uh, we also call the people who register for Tigerthon miracle makers, which makes them feel more impactful as individuals. I know a lot of other schools use the term miracle maker to mean something else, but we just decided to call everyone who registers a miracle maker, um, which I think helps make them feel more impactful than a participant. And um, our last thing that we do, so social media features are your friends, recognize your top fundraisers as you go and reward people in the end. So amidst COVID-19, I actually packaged and mailed t-shirts to our top fundraisers. It was a lot of work, but something like that would have been impossible at a large program. I was able to recognize every single person who was a top fundraiser throughout our year, even though you know it all um, went a little crazy in the end with COVID. And so here are some pictures of other successful ideas that we've had um, that work really well on small campuses. So we had a random act of kindness chain where people can just stop by and write down something nice that they did and add it to the chain. And we had plans to display it at our main event. Um, we also did this thing called Dance for a Donut. We also did Miracle Maker Dares, such as getting, you basically, if someone agrees to donate a certain amount of money, you agree as a miracle maker to get pied in the face, wear clown makeup to class, um, make social media posts about your being pied in the face or you know clown makeup um, like my friend did on the right. <laughs> but it definitely drew attention and with being a small school we were able to provide all the supplies and we were there to document every single person who did these things um, which is really good for our PR pushes and initiatives like that. So our fourth tip is to involve more of your campus and community. So at large schools, it is mostly the students who are part of the dance marathon on the campus, but for unique places, liberal arts, small schools, you can extend your invite list across all of campus and all of your community. So make your movement not just about students, but your local population banding together for a cause. So otherwise your attendance might not feel substantial enough uh, to be powerful. So if you cast a wider net across campus, so like I said earlier, we increased our number of registered teams by 150%. This helped us diversify the types of students involved in the cause and who would be coming and also helped jump our fundraising total by $4,000 from, um, you know, when we had 18 teams to 28 teams. But another way that we do this is inviting professors and their kids to the event. Um, also throughout the year, we gave the president of our university a t-shirt and tried to make a feature on his Twitter account. Um, and the last strategy that we used to do this is sending other campus groups to the hospital. So one of our new members had the idea to send our student programming board to the children's hospital for a crafting day, which is a great idea to use because they get to meet the kids and get cause connection 
all on their own. You're giving another group that independent opportunity to get cost connected, just like your, you know, internal team judge, just like the rest of Tigerthon does, but they get to go on their own. And then they came back to campus and of course wanted to purchase tickets um, and distribute them as prizes to students to register for Tigerthon, uh, which was really effective. So our last tip is be the glue for your school, not a separate organization. So if you are a new program or one at a school with a lot of overachievers who are president of three to four organizations, people are hesitant to add things. This contrasts large schools where people might have the opportunity to eat, breathe, and live their dance marathon program. So basically don't make your organization seem like an additional thing to add to someone's list of activities but rather something that they can do within their own pre-existing organizations. So the best way that we've gone about doing this is through mini events. So they help get people involved and registered on a smaller, less overwhelming scale. And then at these mini events, we start promoting the big events. So people are primarily a member of their current organizations while banding together for a good cause with other people in their organization it's much more effective than asking someone to add a whole new thing, especially if you're an emerging program on a campus. Um, people can just get overwhelmed by, well, this sounds like a great cause, I would love to do it, but I'm too busy with all of my other organizations. This way, you can be like, oh, actually within that other organization with the people you already know, they're a team, you can just show up, just be part of that team, and you can still help out the cause. People have really responded well to that. So some of our mini event ideas, we've done a trivia night, we do volleyball tournaments, pumpkin painting, we had the idea for a 5k. So these events, basically people register as if they're registering for the main event, you introduce them to the cause, the families and kids can be there. And then once they're in there at the main or at these mini events, you start talking about the main event. So don't overwhelm them right when they register wait until they get to a mini event and then start talking about more about the cause, more about the main event, what it is that their registration means, but just like from the beginning, just try to get them to the mini events as part of their existing clubs and organizations. Um, and that's a really effective way that we've gotten people to register. So these tips have grown our program immensely over three years. So hopefully they can help other unique campuses out there too. That's all I have. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Logan, for sharing it. Those are awesome tips and uh, packaged together very well to, to hand off to other programs. So would love to dive in just a little bit um, with some quick questions that students may have after watching um, your presentation. So um, if you don't have anyone that's um, potentially a part of your internal team that has a connection to a new team, what are, what's the first step that you, um, that you all at Tigerthon take to go out and get a new team registered? Yeah, so there have been some instances where we don't have the luxury of having someone on the internal team knowing someone in an organization that we're trying to recruit. So the best approach that we've used is uh, we offer to come to their weekly meeting and tailor the presentation to them. So instead of you know, making it an additional meeting that they have to have on the side, we offer to come to them. We have an already put together presentation and keeping in mind, not everyone is going to be for the kids and all that they do, or else they'd probably already be involved in dance marathon. So when we present to these groups, we try and think like them and see what they specifically would benefit from with a partnership with Tigerthon. Awesome. Thank you. And then the last thing I think with, with having so much going on and knowing that, you know, students balance so many different things when they're a part of, um, or when they're in, in school um, class and extracurriculars, um, with, you know, so many different things going on for your, your program specifically, so many events and tabling initiatives and preparing for the, the big event, how do you keep your message consistent um, when you've got all of these things going on so that everyone on your team is delivering the same message? Yeah, so we try to keep things simple and focus on one thing at a time. So 
to overwhelm people if you talk about how if they dance for a free donut right now, you're showing support for an organization that partners with the Children's Hospital and they can register for a mini event, which is just a taste of the main event in the spring and you get food and a t-shirt. Like people will get scared and run. No, more importantly, just get them to follow your social media, collect their email, tell them to dance for the donut and then see them later on campus. Um, mention what you're there for. When they're at your table, when they come to the mini event, mention the cause. Uh, but follow up with them later on about what their registration means and what the upcoming events are. The last thing we want to do is scare people away. And I think an effective way to do it is get them there in person at the mini event. And then for the first time, they'll hear about the main event. Not even promoting the main event until a month before is very much effective on Tigerthon's campus or else people, you know, if we're talking in November about a main event in March, people are like, that's that's so far away like why would I register for that now you know that's probably going to be close to my finals whereas if they're already at a mini event meeting the kids and then you mentioned that something in a few weeks is going to happen where they get to come again hang out with the kids again I think they're a lot more likely to want to come again because they've already they've already been to an event they've already met the families and I think they'd more likely want to show up again Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing today, Logan. We really appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions from today's session, please direct them to the Q&A section on Discord. And this session was a part of the strategic decision-making theme group. So you can find that theme group in the Discord app. Uh, but thanks again for joining us. And thank you for sharing your insights and your tips today, Logan. We really appreciate it and everything that you all are doing at Tigerthon at Trinity University. Have a good one, everyone.